public forum. I have several cards and Bill McNicholas, would you like to come up first for your group? I think you know the drill pretty well. They asked me to hand out a, a letter from the... Uh, it's from Supervisor Conley. Good morning, Madam Chair, Directors, Executive Officer, and Staff. Could you get real close to the mic? You need to get oh, a little I'm closer sorry. to the mic. Thank I you. I moved it back. I got to move it closer. All right. Start over again. <clears throat> Good morning, Madam Chair, Directors, Executive Officer, and Staff. My name is Bill McNicholas. Clean up Marinwood Plaza now oversight committee and alongside of me is service dog in training Tito who hopefully will be a full bred service dog in about 10 days when he takes his final test. Uh, this is the site we've had on the strip mall our community for over 12 years now. It's still there and we'd like to see it cleaned up. It's getting a little bit being an annoyance. It's affecting property values. And I'm sure all of you would not want this in your community or would it be tolerated. But I do see some light. I saw a proposal come in from the discharger for cleaning up the soil vapor. And I'll go into this in the detail in a minute. At the site, uh, demolishing the building, except for the Marinwood Market, and to remove about 2,000 tons of dirt. I think that's correct. Ralph knows the numbers on it better than I do. And get that cleaned up over, and they looked at a schedule of being in 2019. We hope that happens and the de demolition of the building occurs because it's been in the wrap since April of 2014. It was supposed to have been done within six months, and it was supposed to have been done when it was excavating under the cleaners and the building's supposed to go it didn't so hopefully if they're going to do any excavating they're going to have to take the building out so that's where we're at and i really appreciate it uh the community sends its support of the proposal uh not only us but the whole community which we've seen i know ralph has received some emails on that so it's a very positive factor in moving forward that we've seen I got a laser here. I want to show you something. This is the area. If it's showing, I don't even know if it's showing up there. There we go. Right up here is the area that they're going to be doing is the building and at. So this will all be excavated. Not sure of the details or the schedule. Next part, though, is over here at the Eastern Hotspot, SVM5 and MW5, which I'm going to turn over to Stephen Nessel to speak on. And Stephen's also with the committee. Right button, Steve. Okay. Hello, can you hear me okay? Yes. It's okay. Uh, hi, I'm Stephen Nessel. And I, first, I want to uh, briefly thank you for the opportunity to speak before you. We know each other. We've been around for a while. And I, I, I want also particularly want to thank this board as well as the staff because we're making progress. It's been, um, it's been some number of years, I guess. I don't, I don't actually know, I, 2006, 2008, whenever this process got started. But we are making progress, which is uh, a great joy for the community. And, uh, you know, there's good w wishes for us to, uh, you know, help move the process along today. So uh, I, I, but I uh, just want to tell the director, new director, you got great staff behind you. You probably know that already, um, and uh, a good board as well. Um, but we're going to, I want to start on one thing. Uh, right there on the eastern hot spot, you'll, you'll note it's the crosshatched area. Uh, oh, 
Well, oh, shoot. Um, the cross-hatched area right there. Um, and that is the fence line on the other. Uh, this, is, this is the area we're interested in. That's the hot spot. But what we're here for today is the area on the other side of the hot spot as well um, uh, in, on the Caltrans property. Apparently, the discharger uh, wants to uh, get, get your blessing and release the property once it's uh, done on their side of the fence. But as we know, liquid doesn't respect chain link fences, and there is con uh, significant contamination, we believe, on the other side of the, the uh, uh, of that fence. So um, just to, as a point of, of illustration, sorry, this is new. Okay, so this is the eastern hot spot. That was the cross-hatched area I just showed you. This is an, another, uh, th th this one is looking east, or looking west, and this one is looking east, and you can see the highway. And on the other side of the, the chain link fence, that's the eastern hotspot on the Caltrans property. That's what we're talking about today. And as you can see, it's really quite close by. Um, this is a cross-section of the contamination. And the problem is, is if we don't remove this contamination, all of our efforts to remove the toxic soil vapors and the, uh, uh, the, the groundwater contamination will be all for naught. Uh, so it is absolutely essential that we um, uh, aggressively go after the Caltrans right-of-way hotspot. Um, this actually isn't the slide I wanted to show you, but uh, the last time we were here, we, there was a discussion of uh, establishing curtains of uh, bi biological walls um, concentrically uh, uh, going outward along the groundwater flow. And we think this is a great idea. We'd like to get that started as soon as possible uh, because this is going to uh, protect the, prop the Silvera property as well as the St. Vincent's property. Um, we are still dealing with toxic waste, and we don't want to uh, minimize this. Um, it, you know, it's groundwater. Your charge is to protect groundwater. We want to make sure that that... Uh, that the cleanup actually happens. As you can see, we have staying power. We're going to be with you until this is uh, released. <laughs> and we're warning you now. But uh, we, and the whole community is behind us, not just our community, but um, also environmentalists, student groups, and social justice advocates throughout Marin County. One of the reasons why this is so important is this area in the past has been designated for affordable housing. So there, I mean, the, one of the plans in the future may be housing. So we want to make sure this area is safe for human habitation. So that's, that's all I have today. I'm really here just to remind you that we're still here. And uh, uh, we ask that you do not split, um, I, 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 I don't have the right term. The, the site isn't cleaned up until the, everything is addressed. We can't do it piecemeal because that endangers the whole uh, contamination from being cleaned up. So Caltrans must be, and Marinwood Plaza must be thought of as one contamination site that needs to be fully addressed before releasing um, property for, for other uses. So that's all we have to say, all I have to say today. Uh, I'll turn it over to Ann, who, Ann Moran. Moran. Thank you. All right. We do know that you have staying power, and we also know that you kind of know the drill here, so that if your next few speakers could pick up the pace a little bit, we would appreciate it. Well, I, mainly, I wa I'm Ann Moran, and I represent the uh, homeowners of Casa Marinwood. I'm uh, on the board there. So I've been watching this for a long time, and and uh, and we've been worried we have children and just now we are finally going to have testing uh, in CASA uh, to see if uh, that area is in danger and, and I'm, I'm really thankful because looking across there and seeing so much damage it's it's just been a worry that that we would have it in our groundwater as well 
And so sticking, uh, getting, just getting some testing uh, in our area will be uh, of a great consolation to us. And so I, I just want to say thank you and, uh, and stick with us. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Moran. Neil Bardak? Yes. yes. My name is Neil Bardak. Uh, good morning to the panel. Uh, I'm here basically to put a, a face on Catholic Charities, our client, to let everyone know that we're concerned. We're, we, along with Silvera Ranch, are taking the brunt of the, uh, of the delays as they've been over the years. Uh, the numbers are getting higher, oddly enough, in some places. We're trying to get greater monitoring on the plume because the plume has been growing. Uh, and delay hasn't helped us at all. And we'd like to be, as everyone else on this, in this room, done with this and successfully. So that's, that's my message, and I'll keep it short for that reason. Thank you. Thank you. And Mr. Trotter. Yes. Can you hear me all right? Right. Yes, hi. I'm the uh, attorney for the for Lorraine and Renee Silvera. Renee wanted to be here today. She takes care of her mother, and her alternate caregiver was got got ill this morning, and so couldn't do it. Um, and uh, you know, we we are, as I said, the Silvera property is in the is right there directly in the flow of the contaminated groundwater, PCE, and other breakdown products. Um, and uh, they get to Silvera's property before they get to Catholic Charities, and the groundwater on the Silver property is a source of drinking water there. So th this is very much an issue for them to get this all cleaned up to that five part per billion standard as quickly as possible. Um, we have two concerns. We've, we've made that concern, uh, uh, brought that con those concerns to the attention of staff in the past. We think the, uh, the permeable reaction barrier should be extended to the beyond the 30 part per billion range all the way to the five part per billion line. That hasn't happened so far. They're supposed to be evaluating that. We hope that staff and Redwood Plaza hope, uh, ultimately come to that, that right course of action. Because if they don't, they're not going to meet their 10-year uh, cleanup timeline. And that has consequences. Um, this is all groundwater that could potentially be used by the Silveras. And right now, it's off limits. So that's point one. The other is, with respect to the, the eastern hotspot, um, it is true that those levels uh, at the eastern hotspot are continuing to be very high. And, and that groundwater is flowing our way because uh, it goes downhill. Um, it would be uh, great if the area there could be the subject of more aggressive remediation, perhaps some excavation of the eastern hotspot area. It's, the groundwater there was partially treated and dealt with. But because the contaminant flow is continuing, it's, been, it's continuing to be uh, at a fairly high level. It would be helpful if, if we could have a nudge towards staff to actually look at that area in conjunction with the Caltrans area and clean it up so it gets cleaned up before it hits the Silvera's property line across 101. Because, you know, it's one of those situations where I don't know how many years it takes for that water to travel, but they could, quote, clean it up, and then it could just get contaminated again, and so they wouldn't meet their 10-year cleanup, and it'll last for a very long time and permanently create stigma on the Silvera property. So there are reasons why we need to treat this sort of as a, as a unified whole and, and stop the contaminant flow before it hits the Silvera property. And we hope that we will see some action in that regard in the near future. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Uh, do we have uh, an update from the staff that you would like to share with us? Sure. Uh, Stephen Hill with the, the Water Board, head of the Toxics Cleanup Division. Um, we're hearing two points, I think. Uh, one is to do additional um, on-site cleanup to address high cell gas levels. Water Board staff has required that work. The discharger has submitted a work plan. That work plan is out for uh, public comment at the moment, uh, but it seems to be generally supported. So we expect that we will approve that that work plan and, and get that work going. Uh, the second issue seems to be the uh, eastern hotspot. And there we've uh, required the discharger to look at the uh, portion uh, that extends onto the Caltrans right away. 
uh, and they have completed that work, uh, and the soil concentrations found were negligible. Uh, the only high level was, was in an area of, of saturated soil where we know the groundwater has some impacts. There is uh, groundwater cleanup planned in that area um, as part of the dischargers plan to clean up off-site groundwater. That plan's approved and will be implemented. Uh, in terms of the, um, the permeable reactive barrier and the off-site groundwater, um, the, uh, the cleanup order sets a 10-year time frame for meeting cleanup standards off-site. So the discharger, uh, we've chosen not to get very prescriptive about how the discharger does that. We've given them this pretty strong performance standard, the 10 years. And so we're, we don't want to micromanage how they do that. We do have full enforcement rights if they don't get there in 10 years. Uh, they feel they will. They, they're going to do monitoring uh, of the, uh, the, the fringe areas of the plume, and um, they have the option to ramp up the effort if they're not seeing progress in the fringe areas of the plume. So we're satisfied with the direction things are going, um, and we will continue to update you as, as necessary. Other questions? I, I just have a brief comment. This is not my only road to go. Um, I'm working on rebuilding infrastructure and in parks in Berkeley, and uh, this group is a model for effective citizen activists. Um, we, we know you'll be here. Um, and I, I just wanted to note, I, I mean, I remember this very clearly, and, and I think we all appreciate you bringing it to attention and, and, and getting it to be a priority. Um, when last we dealt with it, uh, we talked in some length about the movement of water, which is very slow. And um, you know, the old principle, which was taught to me by Jay Davis, who was one of the scientists at the Estuary Institute, was when the kitchen's flooded, first turn off the taps. And I think we've, we've finally gotten our hands uh, around turning off the taps pretty thoroughly upstream. Um, when you're dealing with the material which is already left in the groundwater, it, it's just helpful to keep in mind how slowly it moves through the, through the ground. And as long as we've got an effective barrier there, bioremediating it and keeping tabs as to whether or not it's working, um, I think that matches the, the slow pace of the ground. But uh, I do appreciate all your efforts. Just out of curiosity, do we have data at this point which suggests that it is working? You mean the off-site groundwater cleanup? Yeah, I mean the barriers at this point, I think some of them, the test barriers have been installed at this point. I think I'd like to let Ralph Lambert, the case manager, answer that question because he's much more familiar with those details. Ralph, could you come up? Uh, sure. Uh, Ralph Lambert uh, in Toxics Division. So if the question is um, about the groundwater treatment, they they have a, a test area and it's been it's been fairly successful there. Um, there's fluctuations. Uh, we see particularly some of the breakdown products increase, which is pretty typical. Uh, they haven't done the rest of the injections yet. Uh, it's really muddy out in the fields right now. There there are. Uh, I wanted to mention there are proposed injections at the Eastern Hotspot that have been approved. There are proposed injections at Caltrans. Uh, they did do the investigation at Caltrans and did not find uh, the, the release, uh, surface release or dumping extended over onto Caltrans property um, and the soil vapor sample within two yards of the fence line on the Caltrans property is, is uh, within standards too. But the, the groundwater exceeds standards. Uh, at the eastern hot spot, the groundwater last was 44 parts per billion for the PCE uh, with a drinking water standard of five. But, um, but all the soil samples at, at both the eastern hot spot and elsewhere on site actually meet cleanup goals which are set for uh, leaching to groundwater. Uh, but they don't have cleanup goals for soil to soil vapor. Uh, and so, but from groundwater to soil vapor. But so that's one reason they're planning to extend the one excavation is they think that the soil, even though it's pretty low, is still uh, giving off vapors. Uh, and at the eastern hotspot, they think it's coming from the groundwater, which there is proposed treatment. 
what's sort of the next milestone where we get some feedback on and satisfy ourselves that the barriers are doing the job? Uh, they're the sampling board. again this month, I believe. Um, so, but you're satisfied with what you're seeing, and, and well, we're satisfied that there's progress being made in the cleanup. They, they do need to get to these, these next steps in the cleanup, uh, which is tearing down the building and digging on site, and then the injections, uh, multiple injection lines. Uh, they need to get those and going. And the additional demol demolition and excavation will be done by this this summer. Is that what? I it, it's supposed to be completed this year. The demolition, uh, well, they have, I, b I believe the schedule is uh, uh, three months from the time I approved the letter. The, and uh, it's out for public comment until the 21st, I believe, and then I can approve the, le the letter, you know, say by the end of the month. And then they have three months, I, I, I think, uh, for the building demolition, if I recall. So it'll be done by this summer. Yeah, the building demolition, then the excavation. I think, I think, is I th think uh, another three months. But I'd have to go back and look at the schedule. Maybe it's it's supposed to be done this year. How about that? <laughs> okay. So, thanks, Bill. All right. I, I did um, also want to have a little follow-up discussion here because um, as I recall one of the issues that w came up the last time we were discussing this issue was how far to extend those curtains the injection lines and whether uh, the current the then current plan was appropriate and was going to work because it didn't go all the way into the five parts per billion area. What I understood you to say, Mr. Hill, is that we feel that we, or staff felt that it did not have to require in the enforcement order, um, directly require the extension of that curtain, but what we put in place instead was a performance standard for a 10-year cleanup to the appropriate level, five parts per billion, I believe. Um, and it is up to the people doing the cleanup to make sure that their curtain is going to um, accomplish what it needs to be, what, what needs to be accomplished. And in order to make sure that we don't just go out to 10 years and then say, oh, oops, didn't work, we have uh, periodic sampling that's going on around the edges to, to make sure that we understand how well the curtain is working. Did I restate what you stated earlier correctly? And if not, can you correct it, please? Yes, you did. All right, thank uh, you. Very well done, in fact. Um, I would I would just add that the the 10 year deadline for for completing cleanup and meeting standards in the offsite area is not a standard provision. Uh, usually, there's more time. In this case, we felt it was necessary to have a, a fixed period because um, use of groundwater is happening in the offsite area and may happen more, and so we need to move this along. Uh, we may do this at other sites as needed, but this this is an unusual feature. Very good. All right. Are there other comments from the board? So I was wondering with the whole um, fence line and the site and Caltrain site, like the, so how does that whole is going to work out? Are we working with Caltrain or is anybody is working with Caltrain to make sure that that part is also cleaned up or? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So we've, we've done sampling on Caltrain's property right against the fence line as well as elsewhere on their property and there are um, injections proposed for the groundwater on Caltrans property. Okay, so that's already being taken care that's of. That's already approved. Okay, good. And just, just to comment, there's also additional uh, monitoring wells that have been approved for the fringe areas. So Which I think I think there'll be five total, I think, in the to monitor the fringe areas, see if see if they're cleaning up without the treatment uh, in the low concentration areas. Very good. All right. Thank you very much for the update.
i do have another